Welcome back to Mathematical Linguistics. It is time to shift gears from formal semantics and move on to formal languages and automata. Okay, so what is a formal language? Well, first we need to talk about its components. So, we call an alphabet a finite set consisting of symbols. So, normally we write the alphabet with a capital sigma. Uh, sometimes I'll shorthand it, it'll be curly like that sigma. But, it consists of symbols. So for instance, the Roman alphabet, A, B, C, D, all the way up to Y, N, Z, well, that is going to be the letters we use, and those are symbols of our alphabet. So we can also have an alphabet, say a binary alphabet, so sigma bin, which is just equal to the set containing the symbols 0 and 1. So normally, when I Pick an alphabet, for examples, I'm either going to use all of the letters or binary strings. Okay, so a string is going to be a finite sequence of symbols in sigma. So for instance, I could have the string dog, which happens to spell dog, or I could have the string istisawordorastring, um, which coincidentally happens to spell a sentence. It's pure, purely coincidence. I just took a random string of symbols and it, and it made this, is this a word or string string? It's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so again, these are examples from English, but a string does not have to make sense. So I could take the string wwyxavc. That's also a string. Okay, this just doesn't really mean anything to me, so I didn't pick it as an example. Okay, so there's a few properties of strings we should talk about. One is the length of a string, which we use these absolute value signs. So this just means how many symbols are there in the string. So if I take the string SHMZY, what is the length of that? Well, that's going to be five because there are five symbols in our string. We also have the empty string Lambda, which some textbooks also use the Epsilon, which can look like that or that. This is the empty string. It has no length. So it can be technically processed at any time. So for reading uh, symbol by symbol, the empty string does not have a place. Okay, so if I take the string d lambda zero, or d lambda o lambda g lambda lambda, what is the length of the string? Well, all of these lambdas have zero length, so it's really just a length of three. Okay, and a language is just a set of strings. So for instance, our language in English could be the set of all strings that are words, or the set of all strings that are uh, phonologically valid for us. So str clusters are okay, stp clusters would not. Okay, so that's a language. Now, there are things we can do to strings. So one is we can reverse them. So this is done with this capital R at the end of a string. So the reverse means that instead of starting at the beginning and going to the end, we start at the end and go to the beginning. So ABC reversed is just CBA. We can also concatenate strings. This means we can take the string ABC and then we concatenate it with DEF. So then we get the string ABC DEF. It just means we join two strings. Uh, the second one is directly after the first. We also have this notion of substring. So we say Z is a substring of W if Z is contained within W. So for instance, heat is a substring of cheaters because we see heat right here. Note this must be side by side. So this whole thing must appear as a whole unit in the string. Okay, so now we can introduce something called finite state machines. So finite state machines read strings, and they either accept them or they reject them. So before I really introduce what it is, let's run through this finite state machine with some strings and read them. So I want to read 001. So where do I start? Well, we look for this squiggly arrow, which is sometimes just a triangle pointing towards the starting state. So this is where we start reading. And I'm going to put my pen in the center here, and 
I'm going to follow the directions. So I see some arrows and I see some numbers. So this means if I take the string 001, first I start at zero and I read zero and it tells me to loop. Then I read zero as the second symbol and I loop again. And then for the third symbol, I read one and it takes me to the on switch. So I end at on. Okay, that's the first one, let's do the second one. First, again, I start in the off state. I read a zero, so I go back to off and I loop. I read a one, so I go to on. I read a zero, so I go back to off following the arrows. I read a one, so I go back to on. Then I read a one again, and that takes me in a loop, and I end up at on. Okay, third one. I start at the off state, I read a 1, so I go to on, then I read a 0, so I follow the arrow back to off, and I end at off. So, these finite state machines represent languages. So what is the language here? Well, if a string ends in a 1, the machine says it's on, and it's good, it's accepted it. So it has this double circle here, which means it accepts it. So, it accepts strings that end in ones. So if it ends in a zero, it's off. So you can think of this as maybe a light switch. And we're saying, okay, this is good if the light switch is on. If I do a sequence of moves that turns the light switch off, it's bad. So the finite state machine says, okay, I only want the light switch to be on. So you better give a sequence of moves that turns it on. Okay, so that's kind of a demonstration of what a finite machine is. But let's go over the components in more detail, since I kind of just threw this at you, told you to follow arrows, told you what circles mean, and might have been a bit rushed. Okay, so terminology, we have a start state. So this is the squiggly arrow, and it points to a circle, and of course we're going to label all of our circles. So Q0 means starting state. and this means that when we read our string, this is where we start. So if we have 0, 1, 1, 0, we're always going to start here when we first read our 0. The accept state has two circles in it. There can be more than one accept state. Uh, there has to be exactly one start state, but there can be more than one accept states. So if we end up with here at the end of our string, so we end up at this 0 here, and we end here, then it's good. Okay, the transitions are the arrows. So the transitions tell us where to go when we read things. So for instance, if we have Q1 and Q2 here, and we have Z taking Q1 to Q2, if we come to a point in our string where we read a Z, and we're in this state, so let's say we're in Q1 here, and we read Z, then we go to Q2. So this is what the transitions tell us. So those are the three main parts of finite state machines. Okay, so when we have a string, we process it symbol by symbol. If it ends in an accept state, it's accepted. If not, it's rejected. So for instance, if I have two circles here, and let's just do pretty much the same one we've seen before. That's zero, that's one, that's going to start in Q zero, and it's going to end in Q1, and I have the string 0, 1, 0. First we read the 0, so we start here, we do a loop, then we read the 1, and, ooh, that's not good, should switch these around, okay. Then we read the 1, it takes us to Q1, and then we read the 0, and it takes us back to Q0. So we process it this one by one and we end up in a non-accept state, so we reject the string. We say it's bad, terrible string, it's not in our language. Okay, so now that the terminology is over, let's take a look at this complex machine. And I'm going to ask you, what does M do? So I've given you strings of numbers containing one, zero, and two. So we should specify this and we should say, okay, our alphabet consists of zeros, ones, and twos. Okay, so 
this is this is kind of a big thing to look at and say, okay, I see zeros, I see ones and twos, I see Q0s, Q1s, and Q2s, where do I start? Well, normally, you'd have to make up your own strings and test things, but I've given you some strings, so we can work through these and see what happens. So let's start with this one, two first, because this one's pretty quick. So where do we start? Well, we found the squiggly arrow that points at Q0, so we start at Q0. First, we read one. Let's go to Q1, then we read two, which takes us back to Q0. So this one, two is accepted because we end in the accept state Q0. Okay, uh, let's do 211 because that's a small one as well. Okay, 211. We start at Q0, 2 takes us to Q2, 1 takes us back to Q0, and then 1 takes us to Q1. So this string is rejected because we ended up in Q1, which is not an accept state. Okay, so 1, 2 is accepted, 2, 1, 1 is not. Uh, let's do 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 2, 2. Okay, this is going to look like a mess. So we start at Q0, we go 1, so we go to Q1, we take a 0, so we go back to Q1, we use a 1, so we go to Q2, a 1 takes us back to Q0, we take a 2 to Q2, a 0 loops us around, a 1 takes us back to Q0, a 2 takes us to Q2, a 2 takes us to Q1, and another 2 takes us back to Q0, so this is accepted. And we have a huge, huge mess here. So it'd be nice if we didn't have to draw all those lines to figure out where we're going. So um, by now, maybe we have a theory here. So there's two ways we can check out this theory. We can say, okay, what do these two strings have in common? What's different about this 2 one, one string? Or we can kind of look at the diagram here. So we start at Q0, and if we have a 1, we go to Q1. If we have another 1, we go to Q2. If we have another 1, we go to Q0. If we start at Q0 and add 2, we go to Q2. So it looks like we're just adding the numbers and moving the states to the numbers. So 0, we start at 0. If we add a 1, we go to Q1, so 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is... Th oh, wait, no, that's 3. 1 plus 2 is 3, but it's sending us back to 0. So maybe this machine tells us what numbers are divisible by 3. So let's think about this. Let's take a look at our string 1, 2. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. 3 is divisible by 3. What about 2, 1, 1? Well, 2 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. And 4 is not divisible by 3. 4 has a remainder of 1. And which state did we end up in? Well, 2, 1, 1. We ended up in Q1. So this right here, maybe that's the remainder. So when we divide by 3, that's the remainder. So what we can do now is, well, first we can check the first one and check. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So this first string is equal to 12, and it's accepted. 12 is divisible by 3. So this also follows our assumption here, or our guess. So let's check out this last string I gave. Let's add this up. So 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. This is equal to 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So our guess, if the machine tells us which numbers are divisible by 3, then this 1 should be accepted. So let's check that out. Okay, zero, zero, zero. We do three loops. One, two, one, two, one, one, one. Okay, we end up in Q0, it accepts. So we can pretty much say, okay, this machine tells us which numbers are divisible by three. So you can see here the applications might not just be linguistic. In fact, this whole system rose out of computer science. Obviously when we think of binary systems, uh, finite state machines might come in, for instance telling a computer to turn on or off. We know we can do that with finite state machines. So maybe you should be thinking now in your head, 
maybe if this was designed for computer systems, maybe finite state machines don't accurately represent language. So keep that in mind, and eventually uh, we'll come to prove that no, they don't. Finite state machines are not language. But before that, we should introduce them, still get into them, and we can see what other kind of applications they're used for. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.